Welcome back to Life to the Max. Most of us don't go inside. Most of us just watch from afar and we wonder. We wonder what's really inside a cave. Dan Monsky doesn't spend time wondering. In South Dakota, he found Jewel Cave. And what he found inside, well, let's just say, prepare yourself. There are dark places in the universe. Some are just in our minds, others are terrestrial and of this earth. Some are dark and spooky, while others, if we're lucky enough to experience them, are beautiful and surreal beyond our imagination. One such place, the caverns of Jewel Cave National Monument in the Black Hills of South Dakota. The beauty of this underground alien environment is not something that we get to see anywhere on the surface. I mean, if you look around at the Black Hills, this is trees, it's grassland, it's mountain. It's not beautiful crystals. It's not flowstones and draperies. So we see a completely different environment in the cave. So what we're going to be looking at today is our scenic tour, which starts off right here. Caves are underground labyrinths that weave and intertwine their corridors over and under each other, sometimes packing all of their subterranean spectacle into a small vicinity. And so we're going to be seeing this and this. Okay. Half mile trail. The whole thing is a half mile loop, so that right there on this map is about a little less than a quarter of a mile. Yep. So what have we got for distance so in mileage cave here? Currently is 151 miles of cave tunnel. Wow, over 150 miles of passages and still expanding, which means any modern day explorers have to go a long way just to have an opportunity to reach unexplored territory. Indeed, in a 10-hour trip, my last explorers found 45 feet. That is, from here to the door. Folks, come on into Jewel Cave. Head on down to that glass door at the end of the hallway. In the last 50 years, Jewel Cave has went from being tiny, a mile long, to this, the second longest cave system in the world. The cave started small, just another insignificant cavern in the ground. Two gents on horseback discovered it back in September of 1900 as pressurized wind from the cave bellowed out of a tiny hole, blowing one of their hats off as they passed. With help from a few sticks of dynamite, they blew open that tiny hole, and after the dust cleared, Frank and Albert Michaud, our first cave explorers, are able to go into Jewel Cave, which is where they discover the walls sparkle at us. Jewel Cave is covered in all this glittery stuff. Ooh, you can see big crystals. Absolutely. Wow. So we got crystals all over the walls. This is the stuff that sparkles at us. Caves are spectacularly beautiful like an incredible work of art carved out of a solid mass of stone by a visionary artist, patiently perfecting their masterpiece through time. So imagine this, 360 million years ago, older than dinosaurs, there was a body of water stretching from Canada down to Mexico, from Wyoming on over to Iowa. All the Great Plains states were covered by water, no deeper than your little hop, no deeper than your knee. So in this maybe foot or two, shallow sea. Covering a vast area, there lived little crustaceans, little seashells, clams, brachiopods is what we call them, truly no bigger than one of your fingernails. And those things, their remains would float to the bottom of the ocean and mix with sand and coral and mud and silt, and with the application of heat and pressure, get transformed into limestone. This limestone used to be solid rock. So what changed? What is it that makes a cave? Yeah, it's water. So ladies and gentlemen, that vast sea, 60 million years ago when the Black Hills shot out of the ground, kind of filtered through a series of hairline cracks, no bigger than a strand of your hair, and every passing drop made these cracks bigger, wider, deeper, longer. Canyons are also carved by water, but the unusual features of caves get a magic touch. The crystals form actually by water filled with dissolved limestone, plastering up against the walls for a million of years, a very long time really. So heat somehow makes this shape. 
very different shapes too. So this is flat. The hollow pocket. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So this looks like an amethyst. Crystal is throw, uh, growing on the walls here. Uh, right over here too, we have another little pocket, but it's essentially water replacing, pasting on dissolved limestone. So for a million years, that dissolved limestone kind of got painted on the walls. These crystals get a little bit thicker. The cave is covered in nail head spar. That's what this bumpy stuff is. It's like somebody took a hammer and just went bam and made it all nice, flat, blunt, broad. So nail head spar is what we have a lot of. 95% of Jewel Cave is covered in this crystal shape. A cave is always in flux. Some changes are slow and others immediate. And the features are usually very delicate. And look at how it's cracking over time, just settling. So this stuff is really delicate and just vulnerable to its own deterioration over time. Once you introduce water to the surfaces, it winds up making a completely different disposition to the rock formations. Yeah. And how thin and delicate it is. It's just like a thin crust. So this is another shape of calcite. These tendrils are stuck against the walls. This is what we call a drapery. Oh, and the bejeweled stalactites hanging down up there, a completely different color. We got a big stalactite dripping down and making this stalagmite. So these two cave formations are at some point in the future going to actually meet. And some features have very unique and puzzling formation processes, such as the soda straw. Ladies and gentlemen, this three and a half foot long stalactite is hollow. The cool thing about exploring and touring a cave, there's something unique and interesting to see around every corner. So it's 18 feet tall, six inches wide, and an inch and a half thick. This cave bacon is a unique formation of Jewel Cave right through here. Wow. So it's the crystal. This is a drapery. And since it's crystal, it's translucent. Mm. And that's forming just by a layer building up upon layer as it's dripping down? Yep, so it's water again making the cave prettier. If you want to go cave exploring, you need to have an experienced guide. Our off-tape trail leaders are able to take you and a party of four others. You can only take six people into the cave at a time off trail to find new parts of the cave. So you too can get off the beaten path and feel the thrill of discovery and cave exploration. But the simplicity and ease of a scenic tour may be enough to taste what the surreal world of caves has to offer. For more information on Life to the Max, go to our website at lifetothemax.tv.